What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. So check this out. I actually just finished recording and editing a completely different video. Um, as a male victim of domestic violence in the past, I thought I would discuss the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp story, but I'm gonna push that video back to, to tomorrow, so make sure that you stay tuned. Like, just as I was going to do my thing and upload it to YouTube, I saw another one of my favorite creators jumping on this bandwagon of going after Gabby Hanna's poetry. All right, like originally, like I think the first video I saw on this was another one of my favorite creators um, did a review of Gabby Hanna's poetry and it blew up, it blew up. And now a bunch of other commentary uh, creators are jumping on this bandwagon and it's such a dick move, all right? But before I talk about that, um, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna be completely transparent with you guys. Like, <clears throat> although I make videos trying to help people and have people gain some introspection, have people go out and find resources if they're struggling, like, I am one flawed human being myself, all right? And I have been personally working on myself a lot, trying to learn, trying to grow. Like, even though I've been sober for seven and a half years, like, I still screw up and I can get in these crazy mindsets and do some really stupid things. But, like, something I prevented myself from doing was doing what these other creators are doing right now. Because, you know, we're all just here trying to create and, like, this, is, this just bumps me out. So, anyways. What I did months ago, months, five, six months ago, maybe, it was fall of last year, I bought this book. Those of you who don't know what this book is, 101 Poems About My Ex-Boyfriend by Trisha Paytas, all right? So obviously, a long time ago, I covered you know a bunch of Trisha Paytas stuff, um, started when she was still dating Jason Nash and everything like that, and uh, yeah, I got this poetry book and I was just gonna, I was gonna rip it to, to shreds, right? I was just gonna tear this thing up. I read like the first 10, 15 poems, you know, and I took a break and I'll be honest with you, I hated it. I thought it was ridiculous, you know? But then I sat there and I checked my motives, right? I, I checked my motives, I'm like, Chris, why are you doing this? Why are you going to spend time reading this book? Like, what is your goal? What is your end game here? Are you gonna really make a video talking trash about someone's creation that they made? Something that's completely subjective, right? Like I asked myself that, I'm like, God, Chris, you're being a real fucking asshole. You know what I mean? And I just stopped reading it. I put the book with the rest of my books on the bookshelf and I haven't picked it up since. You know, but I thought, oh, you know, maybe this will get some views. It'll be kind of funny, uh, you know, whatever. And I'm like, no, nah, dude, that is just an absolute dick move. Because here's the thing. So I, I was really thinking about this when I volunteered to judge a speech and debate tournament because one of my friends, she's a high school speech and debate coach, and they're always looking for volunteers to um, judge the events. And when I sat there, like these kids... These, these high school kids, like, they poured their heart and souls into these uh, speeches. Like, I judged the speech kids, not the debate ones. They poured their heart and souls into it. And there were so many aspects of their speeches that were purely subjective, right? Like, some of them had a more realistic tone to them and presented their arguments about things. And it was like, it was like a legit speech. And then other kids were just, full of th theatrics, right? They they were clearly like drama students, you know what I mean? And I didn't like, I didn't like their speeches. But like what I realized is I'm like, I'm like, that's just my personal taste. Like if I don't like a bunch of theatrics and dramatization, like that's me. If I was somebody who was really into that, I might think that's the best thing ever. So I had to check my own biases and take that completely out of the way that I scored these kids, right? Because like maybe I wasn't their target, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, like I share that because that's what I think about these, these poetry books from Trisha Paytas and Gabby Hanna. Like here's the thing, I've seen so many creators, so many creators seeing how this 
this whole trend is like working and getting views and subscribers and everything. And I wanna separate real quick the, the poetry from the actual books. All right, because I've seen some others like talk about the books. Like obviously a lot of you saw the New Nerd City video about uh, Lele Pons and he discusses her book and that book seems to be ghost written, right? Um, then there's also Lily Singh. Some people have been reviewing her book. I don't know if she wrote that. I have no idea what it's even about, right? But there's books and then there's poetry. And this is why it bothers me so much. The first thing is, is that we're not the target audience. And if you look at any of the creators, any of the creators making videos on this stuff, like how many of them do you think are poetry fanatics, right? Like think about that for a second. How many of them just love them some poetry? How many, how many of these creators do you see just sitting back reading some like Maya Angelou or some other fav famous poets? Probably none of them. So who are they to completely tear apart some poetry. You know what I mean? Like, think about that for a second. Like, we are all welcome to our opinions, but like, how much should our opinion or someone else's opinion be weighted if they're not in that realm, right? Like, there's this great quote, like if any of you know who uh, Brene Brown is, um, but she had a book called Daring Greatly, and it's, it's based on a quote from uh, Theodore Roosevelt. And I can't remember the exact quote off the top of my head and I'm just kind of uh, spitballing here so I'm not gonna go look it up. But anyways, basically the quote says, like the people who are judging you who aren't in the arena with you, like don't, don't take their opinions with any sort of weight. You know what I mean? Like if these people aren't, reading poetry, like who are they to judge this poetry? Yo, sorry, I needed to edit this in here because something I thought about after I finished uh, uh, recording the video is, one of the accusations is that th these are obviously cash grabs, all right? And this is another sad state of where we're just at, all of us, right? Like no longer can somebody just create something without the assumption that there's some type of financial motivation behind it, all right? The the common terminolo terminology use is, this is an obvious cash grab. What's obvious about it? You know what I mean? Like, is, is it priced at like $50? Is there a leaked recording somewhere of like, oh, I'm just gonna sell this to these idiots out there? Like, we have no way of doing this. Right? Like we are constantly assuming the worst in people rather than just giving them the benefit of the doubt. You know? Like, how would we know? This is this is this mind reading thing that we're always doing. Like, you know, I know what their true intention was behind this, right? Like, and like I don't want to get all like crazy moralistic with you, but how would how would you like it if somebody was just constantly, every action that you did, people were creating a narrative about what your real motivations were behind it? You know what I mean? We have absolutely no evidence that these are just cash grabs and it's not, a, it's not just a person just trying to freaking create something. You know what I mean? So no, I do not agree with commentary channels saying, oh, this was bad, so it's just a cash grab. Like, come on now. But the second thing that just like really bums me out, like I said, like it's such a dick move. Like here are some, like I've, for my own mental health, I have just stopped watching commentary and drama videos, like 90% of them. I have unsubscribed because they, they provide absolutely no value to my life. Personally, I've unfollowed a lot of people. Trisha Paytas and Gabby Hanna, I've unfollowed them on Twitter and Instagram as well, just because, I don't know, I don't really, like, what? how's that helping me in any way? But anyways, like, the commentary channels that I do follow are people like Leon Lush, um, Danny Gonzalez, Jarvis Johnson, Drew Gooden, right? Like, for the most part, they are just having fun, right? But they're not necessarily attacking 
that person's creation. You know what I mean? Like every one of us here on YouTube, we're creators. We are doing some form of like self-expression, you know? And props to people like Gabby Hanna and Trisha Paytas, even if I've had different opinions on the way they live their lives in other aspects. Like I am a fan of anybody who does what they love. Like, I will be your biggest cheerleader. If you are doing something that you love, I will cheer you the hell on. Like, you do your thing, baby girl. And something that nobody can deny is that Trisha Paytas and Gabby Hanna, regardless of what you think about those two, those two have no problem branching out and being creative. Both of them do music too, right? They take that music and they do music videos. Like, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of their music. I, I, I'm not sitting here bumping like, I love you Jesus by Dr Trisha Paytas. Um, Gabby Hanna's like, you know, I'm not really into her music or anything like that. But like the fact that they spend money like doing these high production music videos just because they love doing them. Like you go girl. The fact that they're writing these poetry books because they thought, you know, hey, I'll take a stab at poetry, do it. So here's, here's the overarching lesson that I wanna leave you with, with this video. Like don't let anybody make you afraid to try something new. Because here's the thing, whenever we try something new, we're gonna fucking suck at it. We are going to suck as much as you can suck at it. But don't let people out there like judge you for it and make you wanna give up. Like I hope, I hope, just as a big F you to everybody. I hope Trisha Paytas and Gabby Hanna just write 50 more poetry books, right? And gradually get better. I hope they learn the craft. I hope they get feedback from people who actually read and write poetry and see what they can do to express themselves in a better way. But like, I just think it's a, a an awful example to try to try to discourage people from trying things new in the fear that you're gonna have a bunch of people just trying to get views and, and judge you for it. Like, when for the most part, these commentary creators and everything like that, like, they're, they're judging people on morals and things and all, all that other stuff, you know? But this is like judging creativity, which is just, it's fucking brutal, man. But anyways, this is something that's been bothering me for a few weeks now, and I wanted to be honest about my intentions buying the Trisha Paytas poetry book and how I'm trying to learn and grow. And I just, I, I really hope this stuff stops. Like, there's so many other things to talk about. Like, why waste your time just to rip somebody to shreds like that? Like, for something they created. Like, is it influencing kids in a bad way? Like, get, get out of here. All right, but anyways, that's all I got. If you like it, thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe. Stay tuned. Tomorrow, I'll be releasing my Johnny Depp Amber Heard domestic violence video and it's for both men and women so make sure you check it out all right thanks again for watching see you next time